discovered in the deep. Is this the world's longest animal? In 2020, about 600 meters (2,000 feet) down in an underwater canyon off the coast of Western Australia, scientists encountered a long gelatinous creature suspended in a giant spiral. It was like a rope on the horizon. You couldn't miss it, says Narita Wilson from the Western Australian Museum. It was so huge. It was a deep sea siphonifer, a relative of the Portuguese man o' war or blue bottles, that bob like party balloons on the sea surface, trailing deadly tentacles through the water. This one was probably a new species from the genus Apolemia, a group that generally look like tangled feather boas. The ocean is one of the world's last truly wild spaces. It teems with fascinating species that sometimes seems to border on the absurd, from fish that look up through transparent heads to golden snails with iron armor. We know more about deep space than deep oceans, and science is only beginning to scratch the surface of the rich variety of life in the depths. As mining companies push to industrialize the sea floor, and global leaders continue to squabble over how to protect the high seas, a new guardian seascape series will profile some of the most recently discovered weird, wonderful, majestic, ridiculous, hardcore and mind-blowing creatures. They reveal how much there is still to learn about the least known environment on Earth, and how much there is to protect. To stay up to date with latest top stories, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the button above this video. The spiral arrangement is known to be a feeding posture in these types of siphonifers. Numerous stinging tentacles create a wall of death in the water trapping small prey, including crustaceans and fish. Finding it was one of the chance encounters that are common in deep-sea research. The scientists' aim was to study life on the deep-sea bed, and they just happened to come across this floating jelly. While their submersible was on its two-hour transit back to the ship, the research vessel Falker, then run by the Schmidt Ocean Institute. Screens in different parts of the Falker were transmitting live footage from the submersible. Wilson describes how everyone on board was simultaneously mesmerized and puzzled when the enormous spiral came into view. They all swarmed into the control room to get a better look. It was such a beautiful energy says Wilson. Everyone was like, what is this? Cameras on the remotely operated submersible captured the enormous Apolemia siphonifer in a feeding spiral shape. Photograph. Rav Sebastian Schmidt Ocean Institute. Time was already short because the dive had run over schedule, and so the submersible pilot, controlling it from the surface, could only spend a few moments with the animal. We circled around, took some footage and a little sample of tissue Wilson says, then we just had to go on our merry way. Siphonifers look like jellyfish, and they do belong to the same group of animals, but they build their bodies in a unique way more like hundreds of tiny jellyfish stuck together. Yet, a siphonifer is a single organism. It did have two parents says Wilson. It was a product of sex. Rather than growing in a more conventional way into a body with organs that carry out different functions, siphonifers consist of individual parts called zooids. Some zooids are responsible for feeding, some for reproduction, and others move and steer the animal through the water. They're just an example of doing things a bit differently says Wilson. They're one in their many. Based on a rough calculation from the submersible's track, the spiral-shaped siphonifer is a candidate for the longest specimen ever encountered. At about 45 meters, 150 feet, it could even be the longest animal ever to be measured, much longer than a blue whale. Reluctant to claim any world records just yet, Wilson is working with a specialist in photogrammetry to get a more accurate estimate of the siphonifer's size. It is not an easy task to extract three-dimensional information from the video because the siphonifer moved about in the wake of the submersible's thrusters. Normally with photogrammetry, you're going back and forth over a fixed object Wilson says. This is technically a bit more challenging.